On the surface, Call of Duty seems like a pretty simple game. Point, shoot, and pray you land more bullets on your enemy. While that is the general idea, there's more to it than that. For every unique gamer you come across in your lobby, comes an equally unique and nuanced playstyle you must contend with throughout your match. I mean, you got snipers, trappers, trolls, throwing flashbang. Throw it flashbang. Oh, oh, oh. Throw it flashbang. Flickers. Hold on, let me just fix that. <clears throat> Flickers. And that's just to name a few. But all of these playstyles fall on a spectrum, and at either end you have campers and rushers. Since the first slur was uttered in a pre-game lobby, these playstyles have been butting heads arguing their way of playing is best. So I threw on my finest lab coat and ran an experiment. 20 games, 10 as the most unmoving shadow lurking camper and 10 as the most g-fuel sweating rusher in my lobby. To finally put this age-old debate to rest. Of which is better, camping or rushing? But first, a quick nature lesson so we're all on the same page. The Rusher. These guys are thirsty for kills, always rocking whatever gun lets them go fast, and have an incurable beef with their teammates, so they keep their distance. The Camper, on the other hand, is so defensive they'll single-handedly shut down an entire area of the map for the whole match. They're unimaginably slow when moving, but thanks to their training in the art of proning, they don't do much of that and come armed with more firepower than a fake Russian with a YouTube channel. Hello my friends, it's FPS Rush. I've got something very nice today. About as different as they come, the only thing they can agree on is that playing the objective is beyond them. So, so sorry teammates. <laughs> but what are these playstyles actually like? More specifically, how lethal are they, how vulnerable, and how fun? Well, let's start with lethality, because look, Here's a rusher now doing his respawn ritual of, oh, yep, he's gunning for the enemy spawn. Yes, as the rusher, your only goal is to either get in front or behind your enemy as quickly and as often as possible. And the best way to do this is with the proper loadout. This is really up to personal taste, but for me, I went with this bad boy. The bullet hose. Which is just an MP7 built exclusively for putting as many shots downrange as quickly as possible. With no need to do something as silly as aiming down my sights. Your secondary is gonna be a knife. For the boost in movement speed and for when you gotta go American Psycho on your opponent. <laughs> then with double time, ghost, amped, and a healthy dose of methamphet- I mean, stims. You're ready to get the gold medal for cowardly running away when your gun runs out of bullets. But when your gun does have bullets, let's talk about the most important part of rushing. Making your gun go... Whether you flank the enemy team or are facing them head on, chances are they're not expecting a lunatic with a pink gun greeting them in their spawn. Which leads to some really satisfying moments. But even in the middle of the battlefield, as the rusher you have the luxury of speed, which lets you keep your enemy guessing where you're going to attack from. One second you're in front of them, and the next you're beside them, and they're none the wiser. But your speed also comes in handy when you get in a sticky situation like here. Got one guy on the head glitch, and two on either side of me. After a quick slice, an expertly performed spray, now it's just Mr. Head Glitch. And like Sonic if he got drafted, I can run around an entire section of the map and take the fight my way. Stupidly and in the air. <laughs> but if it's your gun giving you problems, you always have that insta-kill in your back pocket. Your knife. While it's not great to bring a knife to a gunfight in every situation, sometimes it's exactly what you need to stay stealthy during your flank, or to turn a guaranteed death into a slap chop commercial starring your opponents. 
Hi, it's Fitz with Slap Chop. You're gonna be in a great mood all day because you're gonna be slapping your troubles away with the Slap Chop. Now look, here's a potato. There you go. But now let's talk about death. How does it make you feel? Does it make you uncomfortable? Get used to it, because as the rusher, every push you make is basically a roll of the dice with your life on the line. And your odds of surviving decrease exponentially the more players you come across. But of course you're going to be outnumbered, you're in the enemy spawn. So if you do pull off a couple kills, don't be afraid to fall back, take some time to reload and catch your breath. And then get right back to being a nuisance for the enemy team. But just being outnumbered isn't the only problem you're gonna face. Your next biggest issues are gonna be one, your gun pointed firmly at the birds and not at your enemy. Two, those quick legs of yours running you directly into the enemy's crosshair. Or three, taking the wrong corner and oh look, three trigger happy enemies ready to give you a closed casket. So your goal as the rusher isn't necessarily to survive. It's to bring as many enemies down with you before you take your final L. But if death really isn't your thing, you might be interested in a more movemently challenged playstyle. Now, the clips I'm about to show you may be a teensy weensy bit infuriating. But just remember that this was for science. So now, the camper. Anyone who's played Modern Warfare is probably painfully familiar with the camping loadout. Obviously, my primary is a shotgun. Which shotgun? It doesn't matter. What does matter is the dragon breath rounds that set forth a wall of fire in whichever direction you pull the trigger. Now, does this cause irreversible eye damage? Yes. Is it just as bad for the enemies you're facing? You bet. So I threw on some shades and abused it. My secondary might seem strange at first glance as it deviates from the classic shotgun riot shield camping combo. But I went with an M4, because A, it lets me get long range kills while I'm hiding- Actually, I'll let this guy explain. And B, this M4 has a dirty secret that I'll touch on soon. My equipment was, no surprise, claymores, two to be exact, but once I picked up a couple kills, thanks to restock, those two became an infinite supply. On the topic of claymores, let's talk about why these are simultaneously the best and the worst part of the camper's loadout. Because they kill everyone. Throughout my games, I'm pretty sure this inanimate object got more kills than me, an actual player with a gun and twice as many brain cells. And if your opponent somehow survives their encounter with your self-operating nuclear warhead, you know exactly where they're at. My spider sense is tingling. And you can just sit back and wait for them to make the mistake of pushing a prepared camper. In fact, using claymores gave me so much downtime when camping, I was able to concern myself with other important things. But now let me ask you a question. Which size of map is the best to camp on? If you said large size maps, I thought so too. After all, they all have the doors and windows that campers drool over. But no. My best, highest kill, lowest death games were on the smallest maps you can play. Shipment and Kill House. Now, it's probably because no one expects someone to be so dedicated to camping the middle container of shipment, with tack inserts, claymores, and of course a shotgun, Hello, but that just meant the enemy kept throwing themselves at me. Which is really the only brain power you gotta use as a camper, picking the right spot. Some maps, it's obvious, and some require you to get a little creative. But once you've found the perfect spot, you'll be ready to punish any enemy that thinks their AR is a match for your war crime of a weapon. Like on Kill House, where I managed to go 55 and 8 by just chilling in the side room and turning any enemy that got too close into a pile of ashes. But after this game, I had some real post-camp clarity looking at the scoreboard feeling absolutely disgusted with how I got there. But I still had a tiny, microscopic shred of self-respect left. But my games on Shoot House would fix that. Look, 
Nowadays, everyone knows where campers like to lay their nests, and nowhere is more camper infested than the shoot house office. I mean, it's perfect. Two rooms to hide in, limited ways in and out, and a window overlooking the middle of the map, it's camper heaven. But like I said, I had a trick up my sleeve to turn me from a camper to bare goddamn grills. And that trick was my M4 with FMJ and sensor grenades. Now this is a little unfair. Okay, maybe really unfair, because any enemy in this general area was receptive to my tactical playstyle. And as for the survivability of the camper, between the hiding, claymores, budget wall hacks, and shotgun barrel stuffing, on the bigger maps you're basically unkillable. Unless the enemy team coordinates a 5 step plan to exterminate you, or you get too confident and poke your head out so a vengeful player can dome you. There's really not much else to say for the camper, it is by nature a very boring playstyle. But boring or not, let's look at the results. After my 20 game experiment, the playstyle that came out on top was the camper. I know, I know. I wish we lived in a different world too, but even though you're probably going to get more kills when rushing, you're just going to die a lot less when camping. Meaning my camping KD was basically double what I got when I was rushing. And even though an average of 32 kills might seem high for a camper, you can see from the variation of kills that that number was inflated a lot by just a couple matches of some prime camping gameplay. But fair is fair, and if you're looking for that sweet 4.0 KD, it might be time to use those claymores. Because unfortunately, they work. But there's one other aspect to these playstyles I haven't talked about yet. Their fun factor. Now fun is obviously subjective, and if your version of fun is a camping trigger happy arsonist, hey, do your thing. People might have some choice words for you. Yo Bash, I would like, after you get off tonight, I would take a look at your life. But you bought the game like everybody else, so your call. Personally, I think the feeling of the wind blowing through your virtual hair, facing a group of enemies alone, and coming out on top can never be matched by this. So even if blindly rushing into your enemies every chance you get is a risk, it's a gamble I'm willing to make. Again, and again. Thanks for watching.